Hi everybody, in this video I'll share my experience about the air dryer I developed to keep my filament spools away from humidity when they are installed on the printer. Filaments are sensitive to humidity which can affect the print quality. If you want to know more about that, I recommend this video from the Essential Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. He always makes very documented studies. I'll put the link to this video in the comments. As I am a conscientious boy, I store the spools in waterproof bags in which I place silica balls before vacuuming. This provides a storage around 10% of humidity but must be controlled regularly as those bags sealing isn't perfect. But once mounted on the printer, they are exposed to the humidity of my workshop. When designing my printer, I planed a filament box to protect them from dust made of aluminium profiles with plexiglass walls, the front side closing with two magnetic and metallic strips frames. When I decided to build this air dryer, I improved the seal with some sanitary silicone. So, I decided to find a way to dry the air in the box this is usually done by a condenser, which, by bringing the air into contact with a cold surface, will transform its humidity into liquid water and store or evacuate it. A simple method to create a cold surface is to use a Peltier module. What? Peltier? Ah, you may say Peltier, but I won't miss an occasion to pronounce one word with the correct accent in this video. So, we will use a Peltier module featuring the Peltier effect, discovered by Jean-Charles Athanase Peltier almost 200 years ago. And the good news is that we don't have to understand why an electrical current going through a Peltier module creates a temperature difference between the two faces up to 60 degrees centigrade for the one I use. But a Peltier module doesn't produce any cold, and when it absorbs 36 watts, on the contrary, it heats up, and if we do nothing, it overheats and breaks. Did you see this special effect? Watch out, Spielberg! I'm coming! If we don't want this to happen, the hot face must be cooled as best as possible. By sticking it on an old computer cooler, for example, and for a thermal contact to be efficient, it will be necessary to exert a permanent and homogeneous pressure on it. To maintain a flow of moist air, we can add a small fan in the box. To end with theory, you may like to know how cold the cold side should be. This is exactly defined by the dew point, which, for Wikipedia, is the temperature to which air must be cooled to become saturated with water vapor. The dew point depends on air temperature, pressure, and humidity. For a normal pressure and temperature of 20 degrees centigrade, this chart shows that for 26% of humidity, the air must be cooled at 0 degrees Celsius, and for 10% at minus 12 degrees. This doesn't mean that we will dry the air down to 10% if the cold side is at minus 12 degrees, but it gives an idea of what is at least needed. I like this design because it's a perfect school case combining a well-known physical effect, condensation, the surprising thermoelectrical Peltier effect, some mechanical integration with 3D printed parts, a bit of electronics, highly simplified by the use of an Arduino Nano, and a short piece of software. Let's see how we can do this in real life. I built the first version of the condenser which worked, but as I made the worst PCB of my life, it was full of bad contacts. I resolved to order PCBs from China and take the opportunity to make some modifications, as well as images for this video. I received 5 boards in about 10 days for a fairly reasonable price. Once assembled, the result is much cleaner. I'll come back to the electronics later. Let's see the mechanical assembly first. This is the main condenser plate that we will fix with T-nuts and some silicone at the back of the filament box. 
It will support all the other components while interfacing between inside and outside. Below the Peltier module's location, a funnel collects the water that should flow outside. I drilled and threaded the heat sink so I could screw it securely to the plate. I also glued a temperature sensor on it. It will give an overview of the temperature of the hot side, which will be used to control the external fan speed. The plate is firmly screwed to the heat sink. Before mounting the Peltier module, I stick another temperature sensor on it, which will give a fairly accurate temperature of the cold side. I try to have an even distribution and a thin layer of thermal grease. I place the module and I place this part on top which will press on the module to have the best possible thermal contact between the Peltier module and the heatsink. This function could be improved. We will see if the quality of the thermal contact is maintained over time. This part will later receive the fan that controls the airflow on the cold side. On the other side, this intermediate part will support the PCB. There are connectors on both sides of the PCB. Outside, a 12 volt power supply, the hot side temperature sensor, the external fan, and an input for an on off switch. Inside, the Peltier module power supply, the temperature sensor on the cold side, and the internal fan. An input for a magnetic switch, which will stop the condenser when the box is opened, thanks to a magnet stuck on the door. A connection to another PCB for a humidity sensor and a display, which will indicate the current humidity level in the box. This PCB is mounted on the front of the box. The main PCB will take place here to have connectors outside and inside the box. Some more silicone for sealing. Here is the result. Now I can connect the cables to do a first test. I power up the system and the temperature of the cold side drops to minus 17 degrees in less than a minute. Crystals quickly appear on the surface and after two hours, a layer of frost has formed. When I stop the condenser, the frost quickly melts and water trickles into the receptacle. Before finishing the assembly, I plug the water evacuation hole with a small piece of cloth. I presume it will act as a drain to bring the water out. This is all fairly experimental. I mount the internal fan, prepare the T-nuts to fix the plate, and generously apply silicone on the profiles. There is more silicone on this box than in my bathroom. I put the plate in place and tighten it with the T-nuts. Here is the result seen from the back. I connect the power sockets and the on-off switch attached to this very simple cover. This is what it looks like from the inside. I connect the cable to the display and the humidity sensor, and I add a small flexible cover that clips onto the profile to tame and hide the cables. I can now run a test with the empty box. In about 20 minutes, the humidity rate reaches 30%, 20% after two hours, to stabilize around 17% after a few hours. It's more than the 10% I expected, but I think that the box ceiling should be improved to go lower. As I like my box as it is, I'll settle for that for now. And my filament spools can finally find their place away from humidity. The humidity rate hardly drops below 20%, probably because there is remaining humidity in this pool, which has been out in open air for a while, and is slowly releasing it. So much for the general presentation. For those who are interested, I will detail a bit more electronics and software. For others, if you haven't seen my video about the printer itself yet, I suggest you to click on the link above. Here is a circuit diagram. It's quite simple and practically fits on one page. 
The main component is an Arduino Nano, which has all the functions for that kind of application. It's 12 volts powered and can provide 5 volts and 3.3 volts to power other components if they are not too greedy. The fans are powered through general purpose bipolar transistors and the Peltier module by a very classical MOSFET IRLB8721. The temperature sensors are DS18B20 devices connected on a one-wire bus. The simplicity of the resulting design is a real pleasure. The rear cover switch and the magnetic switch have the same function and are wired in series. And here are the control signals to the display and humidity sensor on the front panel. As the display is 3.3 volts powered and its inputs are not compatible with the 5 volts outputs of the Arduino, I use a small voltage level conversion module made exactly for this. And here is the even simpler diagram of the front panel element. The display is a Wemos Mini shield, so it has the same layout. And the humidity sensor, which also returns the temperature, is a DHT22 and not a DHT11, but they have the same layout. It also communicates with the Arduino on a single wire, but not on a one-wire bus. We come to software and features that I will try to describe on this diagram. The system must get the value of the two temperature sensors. Arduino provides a one-wire library that handles communication on this bus and a Dallas temperature library built on the previous one to get the temperature values. For the humidity level and temperature in the box, there's also a DHT library that does the job. We could modulate the power supplied to the Peltier module in PWM, but for the moment it's always 100% powered, except when one of the switches is open and puts the system in standby mode. When it starts to heat up, we should turn the external fan on. But rather than crank it all the way up, I'm going to take care of my ears by controlling the temperature of the hotspot with a PID. I used Brett Beauregard's Arduino PID library, which I sincerely thank. I put the link in the description of the video. I started with a constant 30 degrees set point for the heatsink temperature, but last summer the fan was running at full speed and I decided to have a viable set point at 10 degrees above the ambient temperature. As we have a temperature sensor in the box, this is the one I use. I experimentally set the internal fan speed to 30% of its pack speed. This accelerates condensation at high humidity levels. This fan also stops when in standby mode. With two Adafruit libraries, we can address the display and print the humidity level and the standby mode status. It seemed to me that we should avoid having a thick layer of ice on the cold surface. I added a flush function which stops the condenser for a few minutes, every two days for example, to let the ice melt and the water drain away. To protect the system against overheating in the event of an external fan failure for example, the standby mode is automatically set if the heatsink temperature exceeds 40 degrees. The Sion monitor is the basic Arduino tool for debugging and monitoring the values in real time. I won't go further into details for now, but I share a download link in the description with the project files so you can adapt and improve it if you wish. As you can see, I gained a few percent by slowing the internal fan at low humidity level. For this, I implemented a ramp down function that you will find in the source code. Thanks for running this half marathon with me. You can breathe now. Comments, questions and suggestions are, as usual, welcome. And have a look to my video about the printer. I've been told it's interesting.